my name is Lars Bishop, and I'm a developer technologies engineer here at NVIDIA. I've spent the last 10 years supporting handheld, mobile, and embedded app developers on a wide range of platforms. Today, I'd like to spend a few minutes introducing the basics of upgrading an existing Android application to work well on Android TV. This first video will focus on the absolute basics. Later videos in the series will discuss publishing those apps and taking advantage of the more advanced features of Android TV and NVIDIA Shield. For the purposes of this series, we'll assume that you're a developer with an existing handheld application on Android. Most of what we discuss will be applicable to apps and games, but we're going to focus on the needs of non-gaming apps in this series, as they have a different set of needs and tend to approach Android a little differently than games. Before we continue with the details, we should note that all of the examples in this session and all of the other videos in this series were developed and captured on NVIDIA's Shield Android TV. Not only is Shield the premier Android TV user experience, it is also the premier development experience. Shield includes a built-in micro SD card slot for expandable storage, dedicated USB debugging and power connectors, dual high-speed USB accessory and storage connections, and both Wi-Fi and gigabit Ethernet. In addition, the Shield controller and Shield remote are great for testing multiple Android TV input devices. Paired with NVIDIA's developer tools and our Developed for Shield developer site, Shield provides an unparalleled Android TV development experience. Many apps will just install and run on Android TV. They may not be easy to navigate, and some features may be impossible to access initially but you'll get an idea. The notable exceptions are apps that use hardware features unconditionally without checking at runtime for their availability, especially camera, GPS, or accelerometer. Those apps may crash on launch and need modification to make these features optional. The first step you'll likely want to take is to simply run your app as is on Android TV to triage the situation. There are numerous steps you'll need to take down the road to make your app show up in the Android TV launcher, the so-called leanback launcher, and to use the Android-specific TV apps. Most unmodified apps will not install straight to the Android TV launcher, even those created in some commercial engines. However, there are two easy ways to launch an unmodified Android app on Android TV, even if it was built to target an older version of Android. You can sideload your APK over ADB and then launch it from the Android TV settings UI as seen here. The method is as follows. Navigate to settings, then to apps, then to your app under downloaded apps. Select your app and then select open. Not terribly convenient, but makes it possible to do some initial testing without having to make any mods to your app at all. Of course, that's not an optimal workflow. A great debugging option is to launch your app from a debugging development environment like NVIDIA's Nsight Tegra Visual Studio Edition. Connect via ADB to your shield, load your app as a Visual Studio project, and launch the app from the debugger. Press F5 and boom, there it is. In fact, the tool will even work with Android devices that are not Tegra based. The most important change when moving from handheld Android devices to Android TVs is, well, the fact that the display is a TV and the input device is a remote or gamepad. Unlike most handheld devices, a TV is always oriented in landscape. Having to switch to portrait because a developer or their middleware forgot to include landscape layouts for some part of the UI is a pain on tablets and phones. On Android TV, it's a showstopper. Make sure that every part of your app, 
every screen, every overlay, and every piece of third-party software with a UI supports landscape. This is extremely important. Whether you wrote the code or got it from a third party, if any of your activities require portrait orientation in their manifest declarations, you won't end up in the Play Store for Android TV. If you use middleware, you need to look into this as soon as you can. This and many other important checklist items can be found in NVIDIA's Android TV Developer Guide, shown on the slide here. If you've developed for mobile for a few years, the existence of a touchscreen can become ingrained in your psyche. In fact, early on in Shield development and testing, I reduced my entire family to laughter while I was testing apps on our big screen TV. I had just hooked up the Shield and was right in front of the TV. I instinctively poked at the app's icon on my television, producing only a loud finger on glass kind of plink. It took a while to live that one down, but the lesson stands. You can't tap on an Android TV app. For apps, this non-touch user interface will likely be the single largest block of work required to move to Android TV. Whereas a vast majority of existing games either have gamepad-based interfaces available from some other platform, or at least controller-centric during gameplay, non-gaming apps tend to be touch-centric. Of course, the amount of work required to make an existing Android application fully usable with only a D-pad, back, and enter buttons will depend on the particular application. This can range from pretty trivial for button and list based application to a full UI redesign for something with complex multi-touch interaction. In this case, the first step is simple. Connect a controller or remote to your system, run your app, and begin testing on a TV. To start with, you'll be considering look and feel. Let's start by talking about the look the visuals, and assets. There are several aspects to this. Start by looking at your UI on a TV screen at a living room distance. Is everything readable? Also, is the current focus always obvious? Can a user 10 feet away tell immediately what the focused element is at all times? This may be a visual change from your touch-based UI, since there will be separate focus and select operations rather than a single one, as is seen with a touch UI. Do all of your screens look like they were built for landscape? Do they take advantage of the widescreen layout, or do they feel like some sort of forced compatibility mode? The UI should look like it wants to be in landscape long list views and very vertical items will not feel right. On a tablet or phone, as long as the view could work in landscape, you're fine. If the user hates it, they can turn their phone and use the portrait UI that you intended. Obviously, that's not the case with Android TV. Use the width of the screen and don't stack too much vertically. Finally, do things look sharp and smooth, even on a 4K TV? Nothing will make an app look old faster than a blocky or blurry UI on a big TV. Engineer your assets for this. Most app developers will have dealt with this for phone versus tablet differences, but refer to Google's developer web page on handling different screen sizes for Android TV information. If you already use themes for your UI and don't have too many custom items, then you can quickly try Android's existing TV-focused theme, theme.leanback. In order to use this, you'll need to install the Android support libraries from the Android SDK Manager. Once you've done that, you compile the support library called the V17 Leanback Library to gain access to this theme. Apply it to your Android TV app activities. This can make it easy to create 100% TV-ready UIs from your existing UIs. It isn't a cure-all, 
especially if you use a lot of custom colors and options, but it's a very easy thing to try. In terms of feel, this is about the interaction itself. Can you get to all of the features of your application using the remote buttons? Make notes of the features that are locked out. From each focus point, do the four direction buttons, enter and back, do what the user would expect? One of the most common issues with Android TV apps is confusing focus motion. Users can even find themselves stuck in one section of the UI and have to take several steps to get to another part of the screen when one button press should have done it. For those who have only worked with touch layouts before, the obvious question is, how do I fix the navigation? Well, Android allows you to manually define specific UI elements that are the focus neighbors of a given UI element. So if the default that Android picked uh, for you doesn't feel right, you can specify an override. If you manually edit your UI's XML files for the desired UI element, you can add next focus tags for whatever directions you need to override, as shown here. This is also possible in Android Studio using the Properties browser for the UI element. However, there's a special trick here. By default, the next focus tags are hidden. So you need to right click in the properties list and enable show expert properties and they'll appear and you'll be an expert. Sweet. In some cases, you may find that you end up stopping on invisible items or items that you never intended to be a part of the focus based UI. We often see these bugs filed by QA as have to press down three times to move or something like that. You can remove these from navigation by setting the elements focusable property to false. This is possible in both Android Studio and by editing the XML directly. Having made it through your app's look and feel and tuned it for Android TV usability, the heavy lifting for having a basic Android TV app is done. But there's much more you can do to make your app stand out. The rest of the videos in this series on Android TV app development will look in more detail at how you can publish your app to Android TV and how you can make your app really shine with deep integration into the features of Android TV. This includes going beyond the window of your app itself and onto the device's home screen. Enticing users to come back to your app for new and related content with recommendation cards. Not only can these recommend content from your app, they can provide live information that is of use to the user. We'll be covering this in detail in another DevCast soon. Search integration ensures that users already in your app can avoid lots of typing and can find what they want quickly. Moreover, Integrating your app into global search allows users to find content in your app without knowing that your app can provide it. Thanks for watching. You can click the links on this page to go on to the Android TV publishing session or head on over to our Shield Android TV app developer channel on YouTube.